Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode. I'm your host and millennial investor and today we're going over three stocks that you should be buying in October of 2020. These three stocks are all great, three dividend paying stocks and usually I like to pick some stocks that are outside of my portfolio but I really think all three of these are really good value right now and one of these I just heavily increased my position if you can tell right there and I guess I go ahead and gives it away. One of them is WP Carry, another one is Pepsi and another one is Coca-Cola. Now usually I would like to give stocks that are out of my portfolio but since these three are at such great valuations I'm going to go ahead and just give my bullish reasonings why I think these are great buys right now and I think over the course of the next year next couple of years these are going to be at a much higher stock price with much higher dividend payments but for the three stocks that we'll be going over we'll be going over the dividend history for Pepsi we'll be looking at all the different brands that they have to offer we'll also be looking at just their basic financial information and the future of the company and speaking of future of the company we're going to be focusing on ways that they're expanding their brand expanding their business because just good old Pepsi cannot get the job done. They have to continue to reinvest in their new products and their new brands and continue to grow revenue slowly over time as the population increases as they increase new brands in their business and they get more profitable over time. Then we'll also be going to Coca-Cola. Same thing, we'll also be going over the dividend history, going over the basic brands that they have to offer. Pepsi offers snacks and drinks, and Coca-Cola offers just drinks. And then the main thing I wanted to go over with Coca-Cola after I talk about their future and their branding, the deal that they just did this morning with Molson Coors. They are collaborating to make a hard seltzer in the United States. I think that this is great for Coca-Cola. This is going to be really good news, and I think that this is going to grow the company and reap large amounts of profits in the long run. And hard seltzer now makes up 10% of all beer sales. So we'll be going over that and my bullish reasoning behind that. And then last but not least, we'll be going over WP Carry. That is the one that I mentioned. And of all three on this list, I'm saving the best for last. I think the WP Carry stock is the one that I'm most bullish on out of these three. WP Carry, in my opinion right now, is at an absolute steal. You can get a six plus percent dividend and you have a lot of upside potential for share price gains. And I'll be giving my reasonings for their portfolio, for their financials and their dividend history, all that stuff with WP Carry. And I think all these three stocks are great buys. But overall, if you're not familiar with me, if you're not familiar with my channel, let me introduce myself. My name is Jordan. I'm the Millennial Investor. What I do is I track my annual dividend income, my monthly dividend income, my portfolio value, and I even disclose something that hardly any other YouTuber out there discloses. I disclose my monthly YouTube income, which by the way, next video, I'm releasing the new monthly numbers for October 1st in this video. So if you want to stay tuned, if you want to subscribe to the channel and follow along with me on my journey, Go ahead and subscribe. I'd invite you to do that so you can see these updated numbers for next month. But if you want to see my YouTube income, it is broken down my category there with mentoring fees, ad, M1 finance referrals, credit cards, donations, and then all the fees and equipment purchases that I've had to make since the start of the channel. And then there's my net YouTube income. And basically, like I said, once again, just with that, we'll be updated next month. Now, if you want to go ahead and sign up for M1 Finance, this is the brokerage that I use. If you're curious on the 27 stocks that I own that I scrolled through here, you can pause the video and look at any of these. And if you want to see it for yourself and look at my target weightings, my entire portfolio holdings, this is also shared in the description. And if you're interested in using M1 Finance and investing in all three of these stocks or any of the 27 that I own, you can get referred to M1 Finance using this link that is in the description right here. You now get $10 for signing up. This is the last day that you can actually sign up for this for 20. So by the time you watch this, it'll actually be $10 for signing up. But get $10 just for signing up. This link is in the description. And there's lots of other things that you need to check out in the description as well, like mentoring calls and other referrals for things like credit cards, yada savings accounts, and other things like that. But overall, guys, the portfolio is doing very good. And let's go ahead and get started with Pepsi. Now, Pepsi has arguably the best dividend history that you can find of any stock in the entire stock market. Pepsi has a great track record. So I'm just going to scroll through here and just keep in mind that the times that it goes down in share price, you have to remember that they have also had stock splits. So this dividend has never been cut whatsoever, but this goes all the way back to 2001. So I'm going to just going to slowly scroll through 14 cents, 15 cents, 16, 23, 26, 30, 37 and a half, 42 and a half, 45, 48, 51 and a half, 53.75, 56 57.5, 65.5, 70.25, 75.25, 80.5, 92.75, 95.5, and then, then this year in 2020, even throughout a recession, they raised it roughly 7% up to $1.02.25. And they are now up to $4.09 on an annual basis 
based off the amount of dividends that they pay out. And currently with Pepsi, it makes up 5% of my portfolio. I'm currently up 11.29% on it on a money-weighted return, which adds up to be $14.58 counting dividends and market gain. And I currently own almost two shares of it at 1.94056. And I have an average share price of $132, which is just below the current price trading currently at $138. Now, if we go to PepsiCo here and we go to about and we click about the company, you can find a bunch of just basic information, a bunch of bullet points about their CEO, about their branding and a bunch of different stuff like that. But the different brands that they have is really important to understand how incredible this company is. We're going to start with beverages. Now, the great thing about Pepsi is that, like I said, compared to Coca-Cola, which is one of the reasons why I'm more bullish on Pepsi than I am on Coke, is strictly for the simple fact that they have both beverages and food products, primarily snack foods. But let's just go ahead and just rattle off all these beverage names real quick. Pepsi, Pure Leaf, Mountain Dew, my favorite, Bubbly, Gatorade, Tropicana, Naked, Soda Stream, Lipton, Starbucks, Aquafina, Brisk, Kavita, Life Water, Sierra Mist, Stubborn, Izzy, Propel, One. I think you pronounce this one Sobel is what this is, Sobel, and then you have Mug Root Beer. Okay, a lot of different brands right there. This is some of their top brands, but let's go ahead and look at their food products. They have even more in the food category. Lay's, Doritos, also my favorite. Stacy's, Quaker Oats, which has been growing nicely just along with brands. Bear, Sabra, Ruffles, Smart Food, Smart 50, Cheetos, Tostitos, Fritos, Near East, Imagine, Sun Chips, Smart Food, Off the Eaten Path, Simply, another brand of Lay's, Rolled Gold, Miss Vicky's, Red Rock Deli, Cracker Jack, Nut Harvest, Life, Matador Jerky, which I love, Chewy, Santitas, Funyuns, Cabin Crunch, Pasta Roni, Rice Roni, another different brand of Quaker Oats, Maui Style, Sabrine Tones, Munchies, Munchos, Grandma's, and Aunt Jemima's Syrup. Now look at all these different brands that they have between their different snack foods and snack chips and the different brands that they have through different types of sodas and waters and coffees and including, like I said, that deal that they have with Starbucks is pretty great as I mentioned that in a previous video with a Starbucks video. But overall, guys, all these different brands, I basically just have to ask you a basic question. Do you think that you, your kids, your grandkids will continue to eat and drink at least some of these brands in the future? I think so. Pepsi, Mountain Dew, these brands have been around for a very long time, and I don't think they're going to go away anytime soon. Now, even if I'm wrong about that, even if all these brands are gone 50 years from now, highly doubt it, but let's say it happens, they're still expanding into new brands, and they're getting into new categories, and constantly changing and adjusting to consumer behavior. And that is what is so great about this company. And that's why they have such a great dividend policy. And one of the examples that I can give with this is the announcement that they just made about two weeks ago. PepsiCo to launch drink to aid sleep as consumers struggle with stress. We all know that in America and pretty much globally worldwide that stress, anxiety, depression, all different types of things like that are at an all-time high and sadly, unfortunately, they're growing at exponential rates. I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. I hope it does, but in the meantime, if that continues to happen, PepsiCo is going to take advantage of this and help people aid their stress. PepsiCo is launching a new drink called Driftwell that is meant to help consumers relax and unwind before bed. The enhanced water drink contains 200 milligrams of L-theanine and 10% of the daily value of magnesium. Driftwell will be available nationwide starting in December. Now this is really great because I think in some extent it almost opens up a new category. So one of the ways that I think this is really cool is you know how everybody stays up on their cell phone and losing sleep, looking through endless posts of Facebook and Instagram and TikTok or whatever you use your cell phone for, people lose hours and hours of sleep every single night doing that. Now if they were to drink Driftwell every night before bed, it might be able to help them sleep just a little bit easier. So I think if it tastes good and it helps people fall asleep, I think this could be a new sleep aid category that not only Pepsi could take a benefit from, but if they start getting successful in this category, who knows, maybe even Coca-Cola takes advantage from that as well. But overall, guys, with Pepsi, I just think that it's a great stock with a 3% yielder. It has great upside potential for the future. One of the best management teams and one of the widest economic moats for food and beverages. And I think that if you're not investing in the stock, you're making a mistake as it is an easy money stock for the long term. Now, speaking of Coca-Cola taking advantage of those categories, let's go ahead and jump into their stock and look at some of their dividend history. This goes all the way back to 1998. And look how impressive this is. From 30 cents to 34. I just scroll through here. They did a stock split. It keeps on going up and up 
and up every single year as we get all the way past these other dividend amounts and we get all the way to 2020 where they're now paying 41 cents a share and that is due for a dividend raise in November of 2020 and that is due for a dividend raise in March of 2021 in a couple months from now. Now if we go ahead and go to their about and click their overview, I think this gives a really good idea of the company. I'm sure you're all familiar with Coca-Cola, but they have a lot of brands that you might not even realize as you can see some of them featured right here. If we scroll down and we find some of their top brands. So some of their name brands that you can mention, some of these I can't pronounce because they're foreign, but Coca-Cola, Powerade, Aquarius, Alojas, Innocent, Fuse Tea, Smart Water, Costa, Dasani, Georgia, Santa Clara, Minute Maid, Diet Coke, Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, Del Val, Simply Beverages, Sprite, Gold Peak Tea, and a lot of these brands you all know and love every single day and probably drink at least one of these every single day. And they have a lot of other brands as well that weren't mentioned in this. But as you can see, we're going to go ahead and look at some of the main bullet points that they have here for investors. 134 years of refreshing people everywhere. Over 500 beverage brands worldwide. 500 brands. A lot of smaller brands that weren't mentioned there in that little category. But products sold in 200 different countries. 200 different countries all over the globe. Now, roughly 4,700 different products are sold worldwide through their 500 different brands. They have sparkling soft drinks, juice, dairy, and plant drinks. They have water, enhanced water, and sports drinks, and ready-to-drink tea and coffee. Now, if we scroll down here, let's look at some of these bullet points. System Associates Worldwide, 700,000. Bottling Partners, 225. Bottling Plants, 900. Retail Customer Outlets, 33 million invested 125 billion together with global bottling partners since 2010 in the last decade so coca-cola is obviously reinvesting into new brands just like coca-cola is with driftwell their sleep aid now how is coca-cola doing this they're getting into one of the highest growth drink categories that is out there in the united states right now they just inked this deal with molson Coors to collaborate to launch topo chico the hard seltzer in the united states now here's why i think that is great Hard seltzer is growing at a rapid pace. What really kicked this off was a drink called White Claw. I'm sure you've probably seen it from memes or maybe people drinking them. But White Claws have been growing at an incredibly fast pace. Now, other drink brands have been trying to take advantage of this. And Coca-Cola is now jumping on board, coming out with their own brand, partnering up with Molson Coors. And this is going to be the first time that Coca-Cola has came out with an alcoholic drink in decades. I believe it was 1988. Don't quote me on that. But I believe 1988 was the last time they had an alcoholic drink. And I think that this is going to grow massively for the company. Now, to back up my information on this, they came out with this article, Buzzword, they did, about a week ago before this partnership was announced. Hard seltzer now accounts for 10% of all beer sales. This is meaning that it is taking over traditional beer sales. And eventually, I have a feeling that hard seltzer could make up just as much of a portion of sales as compared to traditional beer sales as Coca-Cola and other brands continue to market more and more towards these hard seltzers over traditional beers like Bush, Budweiser, Bud Light, whatever the case may be. But let's go ahead and look at some statistics here. Total beverage alcohol dollar sales growth accelerated to 17.5% year over year for the week ended September 5th from 9.9% from the prior week. Now let's go ahead and scroll down here. In the most recent week, hard seltzer grew 99% marking an acceleration relative to the prior week's growth of 87%. In the most recent week, hard seltzer accounted for 46 of combined beer sales growth and held a 10% share of the category. A 46% share of combined beer sales. Now related stocks to this is Anheuser-Busch, Boston Beer Company, Brown Foreman, Constellation Brands, and a lot of others. And I think they will all be taking advantage of this hard seltzer. But it's good to know that Coca-Cola is throwing their name in there as well, getting into it early before things are too late and they're too dominated in that category. But overall, guys, to wrap things up with Coca-Cola, between their awesome brands, between their excellent management, pretty much the same story as Pepsi. While they might be a little bit different, let me just go ahead and give you some basic information for me as an investor of Coca-Cola. Currently, it is 4% of my portfolio. I'm up 12.06% on it on a money-weighted return, which is $12 through market gains and earned dividends. I have 4.3 shares of it. I own it at an average share price of $47.04, and it currently trades at $49.40, up about 1% today. And I think that this has a long way to run. Regardless of whether or not they grow their business a lot more than I think, I think that they're still going to offer you that 3.3% dividend that is going to grow every single year, just like it has for the last 50 plus years. And I think this is a great opportunity to buy both Pepsi 
and Coca-Cola. But let's go ahead and close out these articles and jump straight into WP Carry. And WP Carry is the one that I'm most bullish on. And I've been buying the stock like crazy. It is now 6.4% of my portfolio with a target weight of 5%. I'm buying a bunch now while it's really low to take advantage of it. And I'm currently down 5.98% on, on a money weighted return, down $8.50 in total. And I now own 5.4 shares of it at an average cost of $67.93. And it is currently trading at $65.31. Now, as of today, it currently has a dividend yield of 6.38%. Now, it's actually a little bit over 6.4 because they haven't factored in that brand new dividend raise they just did. They raise their dividend every single quarter, including throughout the 2020 recession. They have raised it every single quarter, nonstop like clockwork. Now, here's the cool part. If you're looking into WP Carry, it is a real estate investment trust. It is a REIT. So if you're a REIT investor, if you're wanting to get into REIT investing, you should not focus on EPS or earnings per share. You should be focusing on AFFO or Adjusted Funds from Operations. This is what is used to determine the value of REITs. Now this currently pays out $1.04 per share in dividends. Now it made $1.14 in Adjusted Funds from Operations. So it is still making more than what it is paying out in the form of dividends since they have that 90% income payout in the form of dividends required to them by the federal government. But this is still steady. This is still safe. And the number that I want to point out to you here is the overall collection rate. The overall collection rate for WB Carry was 96% for the second quarter of 2020 and 98% for July. Now it is improving steadily every single month, getting a little bit better, but 98% is pretty impressive for July. And think about this for a second, 96%. Okay, they still got 96% of their rent in the second quarter of 2020. Now, what was the second quarter of 2020? It was the worst quarter in United States history. The GDP drop was insane. So if they're still able to retain 96% of their rent in the worst economic time in history, I think that they'll be just fine. So let's go ahead and look at their portfolio. I have a lot of different REITs and a lot of them are not diversified quite as good as WP Carry. And I just think as soon as you look at these bullet points in a basic their portfolio, you'll understand why I'm so bullish on this company. They get 1.1 annualized base rent. Their average lease term, this is one of the ones that I wanted to point out here. Their average lease term is over a decade long. That counts both new and existing contracts. So their average lease term is nearly 11 years long. Their occupancy rate, meaning the number of properties that they have that is being occupied, that is being paid to them, they have 1,216 properties and 98.9% .9 of those properties are occupied with a business, diversified between 352 different tenants or different companies paying them rent, and they have 142 million square feet of real estate. Now, they have rent escalations that can be raised pretty much every single year for almost all their properties. They have uncapped CPI, which is consumer price index, making up 39% of their portfolio, CPI base being 23% of their portfolio, fixed being 32.8, other being 4.4, and only 0.8% of their properties have no rent escalations. So almost 99% of their properties are able to raise their rents every single year, every other year, whatever the case may be. So they're going to continue to increase revenue, increase profits, and their properties are going to appreciate in value in the long run over time as real estate get more and more expensive. Now, if we go to portfolio here and we scroll down, we go to diversification. Let's look at geographic diversification, property type diversification, and tenant industry diversification. I think the next two are really important here, but it's good to know that the vast majority is in the United States, what I'm most bullish on, but they also have a little bit in other countries as well, primarily in Europe, so they're not all the United States. So if something were to happen in the U.S. and then the other countries around us were to thrive, they're not as exposed as a lot of other real estate investment trusts out there. But what's really interesting is property type diversification. A lot of real estate investment trusts are all focused on one category. They're all focused on office. They're all focused on retail. They're all focused on industrial. Whatever the case may be, they usually specialize in one specific category. Now, this is diversified between all categories very evenly. 24.2% industrial, 22.1% in warehouse, 22.6% in office, 17.3% in retail, which retail is what I'm usually exposed to with my other two real estate investment trusts, 5.2% in net lease self storage, and then 8.6% diversified between other. Now you might be thinking, okay, good, that's pretty diversified. They're in different countries, they're in different property diversifications. Now let's look at their tenant industries, diversified between all different types of areas. Retail, consumer, automotive, business services, cargo, grocery, all through this list. 
all different categories, all different industries, and no matter what happens, if one or two of these go down, they still have the vast majority of their rent since they're so diversified between different areas and all over the world, between different types of property diversification, between different types of industry that their tenants are in. I think that WB Carry is going to be safe for the long term, and considering that their stock price is well off from its all-time high at 93 and 94 bucks, they're trading at 65 with a 6.5% dividend. So even if you're investing in the stock and they maintain that dividend, no matter what happens with the share price, you're still going to get a 6 plus percent dividend yield. And that is why I'm buying the stock like crazy. I think they're very undervalued. I think they're going to be successful in the long run. And that's why I've made this now one of my largest positions in my portfolio. And I recommend anyone out there to buy it. I think it's going to be a great buy in the long term as its share price grows and its dividend grows along with it. But overall, guys, thank you for watching all the way to the end if you made it this far. Like I said, I'll be updating these numbers at the next video if you subscribe and follow along with me. These numbers will be very impressive for the next month with all the recent deposits and growth that I've had. And my YouTube income is right there. And like I said, if you want to invest in these stocks, one of the ways that you can do that is to sign up for M1 Finance. And if you want to sign up for M1, you can get $10 for doing that just using this referral link in the description. And like I said, also my portfolio is in the description as well. So if you want to check out that, that is in the description as well as other things like mentoring calls. And hey guys, we have 42 people signed up now. That is awesome. Big shout out to you. The 42 that I've signed up, I really appreciate you guys. I love you guys. You guys help me be able to invest and make these videos. So let's go ahead and get that number to 43, 44, all the way up to 50. Let's get it to 100. Keep on signing up, guys. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys next time.